everyone, welcome back to our channel VBlox TV where Roblox lovers play together. I'm Toto and you guys already know that TV and I are an old carrying party in Dungeon Quest. And so today I'm going to be doing a solo carrying challenge with a total of 4 inactive ult and myself totaling 10 items per run. So before we get into that, if you're here visiting our channel for the very first time, please don't forget to press that subscribe button to support us and the bell notification so you will not miss out on informative videos showing you how to do solo, playing in teams, and also carrying parties that we're going to be hosting off and on. We're going to start that back slowly, kind of seeping in, and also the amazing giveaways at our 1k sub. We actually gave away one Volcanic Chambers legendary weapon, and so we're planning to do that when we're hiking up to 1.5 and 2k, etc. You definitely do not want to miss that. So here I am swaying with my boys. Look at them go. When marimba rhythms start to play, dance with me, make me sway. Like a lazy ocean hugs the shore, hold me close, sway more. Alright everyone, let's have the camps load in right now. Oh my gosh, even the carry is excited to be carry. Look at that. Here, I'm gonna have a closer look. And <laughs> that was funny. That was just no man doing. But anyways, uh, first we have to clump all the ults together because we want to um, prevent that life link that might kill them as healers. And again, I'm going to start at the countdown at 3. Here it goes. And here we go. It's pretty much similar to that of the solo run as a warrior. But uh, now we're getting a little bit of extra help like with the heal and everything. And so the run is exactly the same to save a lot of time. And so we're losing a couple of microseconds here as we're backing up and turning around, but not too much time. Like before, when you're getting to the first boss, the attack is always going to be that lava splash coming out, then the rays, and then the pulsing pool. Then on top of that, we will have the searing orbs. And so you have to really take note of which Searing Orb does what, when, so that you can kind of run tangential to, like in a tangent, <laughs> in a tangent to the uh, circle around the orb so that it will not hit you. But if you are like running to and from the Searing Orbs, you're definitely going to get burned by that laser beam. So just run around in a lot of circles and be mindful. Always speed up when the pool is coming or when you need to get out of the rays. Yeah, I do get hit here and there every now and then. But when the Searing Orbs is within attack distance of the boss, then you definitely want to stand either by the Searing Orbs or by the boss shooting towards it to eliminate it immediately because the summation or the accumulation of these Searing Orbs could potentially be a run in jeopardy. And here we are doing the same thing going forward to hit them, get the aggro, and then pulling back. Sometimes I find that it's easier for you to pause a little bit, kind of allow the mobs to release a skill on you before backing up, so that if you don't have a lot of room behind you, you still be able to remain safe. Or if you actually need to group the mobs up a little bit better so that you can cast a skill on them, 
instead of having you know hit some and miss some then what you can also do is the same thing pause or the mock pause at the same time and allow the other ones to bundle up so when possible i try to stay near the mob group and put a couple of swings in and of course when you're running through the mobs absolutely put a couple of swing in to help I also zigzag a little bit every now and then just to get out of the way from the artillery attack along with slowing the group down like the melee group down so that they pack together a little bit better so you can attack them all in one go kind of like you can see they're kind of trailing now and if I keep running back it's not gonna work so I have to either double back or zigzag a little bit How you run or what move you plan to make is completely dependent on how much health is left on the mob as well as how far you are from the next zone. So you kind of have to time it so that by the time you kill your group of mobs, you'll be pretty close to the next zone and move on immediately instead of having to run the extra distance. So you have to be mindful of that when you're carrying as well. And of course, at the second boss, when you get the boulder, absolutely use that inner skill to get out of the way because that can actually obliterate a lot of us into smithering. And here, because we're carrying, there's no way that I can just stay in the back and try to run and avoid all those pool coming down. So definitely have to try to patch up those geyser to prevent more lava pool dropping down and I have to be very diligent about it even with the ones that are a little further in the back so always get your skill onto the boss and load that damage out first and then go patch the geyser so again as so long as you're on the move and running all the time you'll be okay because there's only one ray coming down from a random location to kind of throw off your game a little bit but everything else is predictable like the grid that ray is right now and the geyser and so run and patch up the geyser when convenient so long as you don't have them like stack up as like three four five different guys are blowing at you then you should be okay and you have to be mindful of the boss's health as well because if it's too low then you might as well shell out one final damage instead of patching <laughs> that was complete skill trying to get out of that attack <laughs> all right so here the key is try not to go all the way to the end of the road and kind of stand there when all these artillery shooting lava shot at you so kind of like leave yourself a little space so you can run back and forth and avoid these tracking lava pool shot at you And always have your cooldown ready and here is the same thing um, you can run continuously but I wouldn't recommend it I would recommend pausing for a microsecond here and there kind of like allowing the mobs to get behind you instead of trying to cut you off sideways and you will get caught especially with that rectangular thunning zone that they have So that was not too challenging at all so long as you keep yourself moving and remember sometimes 
two micro pause, just like for a millisecond or so, just release the W key before re-engaging so that you can pause, allowing the melee unit to release the stun skill or come after you, just running behind you instead of just cutting up you off from the side and dodge out of the way of those lava pool the artillery units are shooting out. I would actually much prefer to solo carry than to solo because at best it's going to take you 5 minutes or a little less than 5 minutes to gain 2 or 3 items depending if you have VIP item pass or not. But uh, if I were to solo carry in the time frame of roughly 10-11 minutes, I earn 10 items so that, runs, that comes out to be an item per minute for me. And we all know how heavy gear dependent this game is. A lower level player can possibly out DPS a higher level player easily if the gear is OP. The key is to be constantly moving and charge through when you have the inner skill ready so that you will not get caught by the stun attack. So you have to be mindful of where you are on this path and what your cooldown time is because you don't want to have your back against at the end of the road and you don't have the speed skill or the inner skill to get out through the pack because you will need all that to get out of the stun zone along with the lava bomb that the, the orange lava walker would drop on you. Okay, I'm gonna take a minute here just to talk a little bit in depth about this boss here. This boss here is probably the most challenging boss yet in all of dungeon quests because his attacks are not in bursts like how we've seen before but they're actually continuous and overlapping and so the first attack you get is the double flash attack in the fan pattern the second attack immediately after that is the dual slash that form an x and the third one is the time bomb with the pink shell that goes on the player and the player must get into the green circle to defuse it and then you get the double slash x attack Again, while you also get lifelink onto an ult or someone else in your party if you're not caring like I am. And while all that is going on with the lifelink ongoing, giving you like hypertension because you have this red line that's linked you to somebody else and it may explode. And you also get these invisibility attacks where the botches disappear and start throwing down random magma lines, lava lines that's gonna burn you for half of your health if you're at 85-ish because each of the attacks is roughly 46 million. And then while all that is going on with the random lines, you get the double flash fan attack on you simultaneously. So it's overlapping. So all this is happening, you need to dodge out of the way and if you actually get hit by one of those rays and the light links go off, it's a sure oof. So that's why this boss is very very challenging. So with that said, let's hop into the actual dodging of the attacks itself. So the very first attack is the double flash attack. The first one is not really going to harm you, but it's even marked out where the second one's going to be. So you need to dodge out in between those rays and shell out your damage, then immediately run left or right to avoid the double slash attack. And now you can get a bombshell going around you where you have to run back into the green circle to stay safe, but he's going to release the double flash attack again. So you have to remember where it was and while standing in the green circle, avoid the second flash attack. Now he's going to do his X attack again and finally bring up his lava cage and going to throw down all these lava lines that's randomly crisscrossing everywhere while linking someone like lifelink someone to another player in the game so that if you actually get hit by any of these and get the lifelink pop off it's going to be an ibidi oof and to make matter worse he does the double flash attack wow all that lava cage attack is going on so you really have to literally run back like run up and down in between the gap of the fan and now you have to rinse and repeat so you would run into the green circle where you avoid the second flash attack then you immediately run left or right to avoid that double slash attack from the boss and now he's gonna go up with the lava cage again 
and he's gonna throw down all these random attack while life linking two members of your party together luckily this time i didn't get it but he's gonna throw down the fan attack right now simultaneously on top of all these lava lines that's topping half of your health if you do not avoid it so your healing have to be really on point and your dodging skill must be on point as well there is no room for error here and so here we go double flash you have to remember where the flash is and avoid it while standing in the green safety zone and then run to the left right now to avoid the double slash attack and then he's gonna go up bringing his lava cage again to throw down all these lava lines on you while life linking possibly you with an ult or the ult with each other and now the radio fan attack double flash first one second one so he got me nearly death right there Whew, that was dangerous luckily i got a heal on in time and rinse and repeat i could have been easily oof right there if i did not have this on the right now yeah and then the double attack first one was harmless second one got hurt a little bit but it's still manageable all right that's pretty much it folks and so i'm gonna resume it so that we can see what's going on it's nearing the end anyway just a couple more attack well actually as i'm doing this video i just want to let you know that i'm already able to solo carry a total of six accounts so i'm actually getting 12 items Per run and no longer 10 but i'm gonna save that for another day once you have the pattern of the final boss figured out it's just a matter of mechanics and running it it's super easy to be honest and so like if some girl somewhere can actually do like a solo carry of five or six characters you definitely can do the same trust me i'm not that good but um if jane can do it somewhere so can joe and so can jill right well, I hope this detailed tutorial of how to beat the final boss has been helpful to you and that will actually enable your gameplay a little better when you're soloing or solo carrying. Good luck everyone and don't forget to press the subscribe button, leave a bunch of likes if you find this tutorial helpful, tell your friends about us and we shall be seeing you in the dungeon. Take care everyone. Oh, and one more thing, stay safe, stay home, play Roblox with us of course.